Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Clemens and I'm representing Particometrics. We are a company who develops and builds nanoparticle tracking analysis instruments. And today I have some fascinating news to share. The title of my talk is Colocalization with FNTA. And we will talk about how it works and what we can actually colocalize. Um, first, let me introduce you to the ones who are not so familiar with nanoparticle tracking, what it does. So you see the Brownian motion of gold 40 nanometer. Um, this is done by the Zeta view. So this is an ultra microscope. You illuminate with a laser and you see the scatter light in 90 degree of those particles and uh, yeah, they move around. So that's the Brownian motion. And the smaller the particles are, the more busy they are and the larger the particles are, then they do not move so fast anymore. And the algorithm detects the positions and links the positions and based on this diffusion properties, we derive a particle size for each individual particle. This makes nanoparticle tracking analysis a single particle analysis tool. And of course, if you want to have a good statistics in order to get a particle size distribution, you collect several hundreds of particles, which can be done with the instrument within a minute. So NTA is known as a sizing tool for any kind of nanoparticles dispersed in a medium. This can be a buffer, this can be water or any liquid basically. As we know, the properties of the laser beam and the volume, what the laser beam is illuminating, we detect the particles and have the volume and then we can derive a concentration. So directly after injection, we have a live feed of the concentration of the nanoparticles or biological nanoparticles in water. Particle metrics is known as, from a historical point of view, for a CETA potential measurement instruments. So the first instrument was actually a CETA potential measurement instrument. And this is related to the surface charge. So whenever you have electrodes in, an, in a liquid, you have an electrical field if you put an, a voltage on the electrodes. And then depending on the charge, the particles start to migrate to one of the electrodes. And um, we learned later on we can actually do size because we, we, can, we already track the particles in the electrical field. But uh, now with the resolution of the Brownian motion, we, uh, very soon we also introduced size and concentration measurement. Then uh, we added the feature of fluorescence detection. And this is very important when it comes to specific information. Uh, by the help of fluorescent probes, we can see fluorescence and we can distinguish between different types of particles by blocking the excitation light of the laser by means of a filter. Um, in the same way, we also analyze much more information in the video itself. So not only the diffusion properties of the particles, but also how bright it is and what the area, so how large the area is. And by the help of multivariate statistics, such as cluster analysis, we can apply cluster analysis on NTA data. Coming back to fluorescence, um, if you measure in typical scatter mode, uh, the instrument cannot distinguish whether the particle you're looking at, if it is a precipitate, is it a nanobubble, or is it actually uranolite you're looking for. So by the help, you mask such particles with the help of antibodies and fluorescence probes. And then with the help of fluorescence, this gives specific information, which is crucial when it comes to biological an analysis. 2008 um, was um, the first instrument. So a little, give me, let me give you a brief introduction to the history of, of particle metrics, where we come from. Uh, this was um, a CETA potential measurement instrument in, in 2008. In 2010, we added the size and the concentration. In 2013, we added the fluorescence option. And in 2018, this was a revolution. We added two lasers. We implemented two lasers in the instrument. So you, by the click of a mouse, you could switch between uh, the laser wavelengths so you can select, which is very helpful when it comes um, to fluorescence analysis as well as an automated filter slider. So we did more automation and yeah, paid attention uh, to the uh, requests from our customer. So we didn't stop there. 
uh, one year later, we added two more wavelengths and so the user can now uh, select between four different lasers, meaning four fluorescence channels and one a scatter channel. And this is an example of um, a staining of extracellular vesicles, uh, multi-fluorescence staining. In uh, three of the channels we have the typical tetraspanins, which are um, on the surface of the EVs, the uh, CD9, CD83 and CD63. And in the red fluorescence channel, there's the cell mask deep red. This is a membrane dye. So this is a full comprising analysis. We have uh, five NTA channels, so the four, uh, the four fluorescence channels and one scatter channel, all on the same sample. So what comes next? Uh, whenever you have multiple lasers, what you face is that the lasers not necessarily show in exactly the same volume. So meaning if you have the two lasers, so this was when we released the, the twin, this was, so not all of the lasers directly look into the uh, same uh, volume or you, the overlap is not perfect. And for, for at that time, this was not the requirement. So we, we can measure on all of our positions. We have 11 measurement positions where we scan through, but uh, there, there, are a little bit, uh, there was a little bit of offset. And so we wanted to know, can we push this? Can we um, design a laser which fits the requirements for co-localization, which is the laser volumes they have too much? And so we tried a new generation of lasers and um, in the um, animation you can see for, for particles, for um, 100 nanometer particles, this works very nice. You have a perfect overlap of the illumination volume when you switch and scatter between the two laser wavelengths. So this was done on an already existing twin instrument, a PMX 220, 488, uh, 640 nanometer and with a new type of laser where, such, uh, where the illumination volumes are perfectly aligned. So this is very nice. This was very exciting for us. And we also wanted to see, can we do fluorescence? What happens if we now evaluate the uh, fluorescence channels? And uh, this is a sequence of scatter and uh, fluorescence in, with the excitation of the 488 nanometer and the 640 nanometer laser. And we can see when we switch from scatter in the, um, in the fluorescence that the particles are within a so-called bounding box. Because of their diffusion, they uh, diffuse, of course, uh, in the switching time, but they have to stay within the bounding box and only then um, the colocalization is valid. And of course, you have to uh, match the concentration. If the uh, concentration is too high, then of course you have uh, a, 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 artifacts of course in the in the linking but uh, once the concentration is matched which is the typical measurement range of the instrument um, there's no problem because the software can detect such things and um, does the uh, co-localization um, efficiency does the uh, calculation this is now um, shown the evaluation of the different modes if you switch between scatter or scatter and fluorescence or what is the most challenging it's uh, the switch between the two fluorescent modes and we achieve more than 80 percent of linking and if if we go uh, uh, switch between the uh, lasers in the scatter mode we achieve almost 100 percent of co-localization efficiency which is very nice so it works with standards and we wanted to see if we can have a biological uh, model and with the liposomes we mimic um, a biological particle and what we did, we did a double staining um, with membrane dyes. So the uh, liposomes have now green and red fluorescence on the surface and we tailored the experiment in such a way that we have different ratios of uh, flu fluorescence. So we have a so-called green sample and a red sample. So that's the red sample, so around 50% are, uh, show red fluorescence. Um, this is the result which you already get with a, a typical N, a twin NTA. We have the scatter in gray and red is the uh, red fluorescence of the sample and in green that uh, represents the population of the green. And uh, there's a, a second sample, a sample B or the green sample where the uh, green signal is much higher than the red. In this case, the um, efficiency of the staining was higher. Uh, depending on, on, the, um, on the ratio of the dyes. 
we, we matched it uh, by the help of, of the ratio of the dice and we achieved 81 percent of a similar screen positive signal versus 53 in in the uh, red channel and uh, this is now uh, the first presentation of uh, co-localization on stained vesicles fluorescence so we switch between 640 and 488 nanometer and where the particles are within the bounding box there are several of them and this is uh, six percent of the total particle count and uh, if you recall um, nine percent were green positive and six percent of the total concentration is red and green fluorescence so we have the co-localization fine we find it on six percent of the particles sample b the uh, green sample where the majority is green uh, we find that we have 40 percent of the total particle count are co-localized and yeah, this is a very nice finding. So these were the first results. Um, and it's just nice to see that we can actually see um, membrane dye already. The uh, experiment is not ideal uh, because of, of the matching of the, uh, the dyes and the affinity of the dyes might be different, but it was just as a proof of concept. Does it work? Um, is the sensitivity high enough? And yeah, we link up to, we, we find up to 75% co-localization for example in the uh, green sample or in the red sample so even if we have only nine percent uh, green positive we find 73 percent of this small population we find also in in the red signal in summary um, the properties or the measurement tools we added the co-localization feature now we have um, we can get out the number how much of, of one of the populations, the fluorescent population, we find also in the other channel. And this is for the twin. We realized it for the twin for 88 and 640. We have still uh, the lasers in test. They are in, in a serious production already. And we can verify 95% overlap at least of the illumination volume in scatter. And the good news is so. Um, the PMX120 will be upgradable so that we have the new laser will fit also in existing instruments. Uh, the software is still under uh, development and expect further improvements. At this point we have up to 80% um, efficiency in the co-localization if we do this uh, with the standards. And yeah, we could see that uh, in this talk I could present first results of real samples by fluorescent vesicles. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and I would like to invite you to our online booth, to our virtual booth, just step by and get the latest news on co-localization, what is possible with NTA and uh, we are looking forward to meet you there. Thank you very much.